Of course, every day will be a fight for survival. <laughs> I don't even know how I feel. I don't even know how I feel right now. Really evil energies. Ghost Next Door is coming from Lancashire this week, from Pendle Hill. Now Pendle Hill and Lancashire are pretty much in the middle between Preston, Blackpool, Manchester and York. And the reason that we're going to Pendle Hill is to investigate a tale of witches. Ghostly guest on Ghost Next Door this week is Alice Nutter, one of the most notorious of the Pendle Hill witches. She was put to death in 1612 under King James I in one of those massive outbreaks of paranoia about people who were just really harmless healers, which is what a witch at its most basic form is. But in those days, to admit you were a witch meant certain death. One of the things that I like to do before we start on Ghost Next Door is to douse the area and kind of get a reading of, of what it's saying to me with my, my crystal. So I'm going to start by doing that. I'm just going to tune into the energy here and see what I get. Because we're in the graveyard which is very associated with the, the witches here who were put on trial in 1612. And that's interesting. The reading I'm getting straight away is from side to side. Now, when my crystal dowser does that, that always tells me that there's a spirit presence that's having an influence on it. And as you can see, it went straight into that. Middle of the afternoon, in a churchyard in Pendle, in the little village of Bali. We've got Pendle Hill behind us. And this whole area was where the witches were put on trial and were um, then taken off to Lancaster prison and hanged. And my sense is that some of them were brought back here and buried and some of their descendants are definitely buried in this churchyard. And I think that our guide today, Simon Entwistle, is a direct descendant of those witches and of that family and I don't think you may realize that but look at that reading Jenny there is definitely a very strong spirit presence here We're in the cemetery in the new church in Pendle and I'm looking around investigating to see if there's any spiritual activity here. Um, the tape right below me attached to this gravestone started moving by itself and the rest, rest of the structure didn't move at all so I wanted to see if that was due to spirits and with my hands I did feel the lighter and the, the colder energy I would call it. There's definitely something a change in temperature from the rest of the surroundings usually signifies spirits.
I don't like the energy in this graveyard. Um, sometimes I go to graveyards yeah. and I do just for fun. Mm. And I like the energy because it's kind of a space where souls have ascended and it feels quite nice. Right. But here, it feels so congested with all sorts of energies, which suggests to me that there's lots of spirits here that were that their ending wasn't good. Right. Basically, right, right, that's right. what that means yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 I can feel something from that actually. Um, what we do know is we are in New Church in Pendle, the very, very centre of the Pendle Witch story. Mm. And a lot of the accusations regarding witchcraft came from this very, very cemetery mm. in the form of grave robbery, teeth were extracted from skulls, in some cases, scalps taken off, and hair taken off to make these clay pictures. Uh, so I should imagine that um, th the grave robberies took place against people that. Um, uh, were laid here to rest, but would have, would have had their graves literally raided. So it would cause some uh, some definite anguish, that's for sure. So that means that the spirits may have been pulled back here because their bodies have been messed with? Quite possible, quite possible. We know it definitely happened. At the trials at Lancaster in 1612, um, evidence was brought forward of what we call a clay picture. When I say a clay picture, like a doll. But the doll had human hair and human teeth that had come from this very, very cemetery. So was that used during um, spells and whatever witchcraft yeah, you were yeah, doing? Yeah, very much so. Uh, what actually happened, apparently, so we're told mm. in the story, is these so-called witches were making, as they called, clay pictures of human beings. Mm. They would then curse the individual they wished to uh, maim or, or, or kill, mm. and then crumble the clay pitcher over a fire. But it had to contain human hair and human teeth, and we know that those items came from New Church in, in Pendle. So what we've learnt so far was that under James I, who was on the throne at the time in 1612, when the witches of Pendle were being persecuted and tried and ultimately hanged, is that when some of them were hanged, when some of them were executed, their bodies were burnt and they were then brought back into this graveyard and buried here, which is what I'm picking up. I had this really weird sort of burny smell, which I think is sulfur because I've had this like smell before. It smells burny, like something's burning. It's a very strange sort of burny sort of smell. What does that mean? Um, when, it is, when it tends to smell sulfur, it tends to be something to do with black magic in a certain place. Which it's quite weird it's sort of gone now, that's really weird, it just came for a bit, for a few minutes. In the case of the Pendle Witches, they had four familiars in the form of dogs, Tib, Ball, Fancy, Dandy. These dogs came to them at different times of their lives and said we can give you special powers, but in return we need to suckle from your flesh. Um, they were basically the devil in disguise, at least that's the way they were described in court at Lancaster in 1612. Why is it pressing my neck? Which part of your neck is it? Just like this bit here. I have Oh. It it's hurts. Probably, it's probably not pressing your neck, it's probably just showing you how it died. Oh, it's painful. Well, yeah. That's how it Of course. Death isn't. Of course. Oh, that's horrible. Of course, yes, it would be, yes. Oh. That's the first time I felt that, actually. I don't normally feel like any pain in my body whatsoever. Welcome to the future of mediumship. Oh, it really hurts. You feel everyone else's pain. Smell the sulphur of the burning. Oh, no, it has my jaw as well. And then the pain of the rope. Uh, the, 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 the links are incredible, really. It sort of hurts the light of my jaw as well now, a bit. Gosh, you, you felt the pain of the actual hanging, but the smell of the bodies that were burnt afterwards. I mean, it, I don't it, know. You've, <laughs> you've somehow brought it back with you. It, it's, yeah. it, it's been brought to this very area where all the crimes took place. Yeah. My, my jaw sort of here hurts as well. I don't know why there's like a, a link between that bit and this right, bit because right. it really hurts on like well, this there's, side. There's two ways of killing people with by hanging. There's one where they drop, and if they drop, the neck snaps. And, ah. then, and then there's one where they push them Slow off. And it, that is so weird. So weird. There's a lot of new stuff happening to me in this filming. This I think this is the first time I've felt the pain of a spirit. Normally I just channel them and they give me watery eyes. I felt their sadness before. Oh, that was my hand. Um, I felt their sadness before, but what? Ow, my neck! Like, ow!
Do you get any sense that you might have once been connected with these actual witches? That's a very interesting question. I feel very connected to the Pendle Witches. When I saw Simon, our tour guide earlier, we both felt recognition with one another. And um, I know that I, I know that in my past lives I was a witch, probably multiple times. And the fact that I've I've, been, I've had a personal interest in the Pendle Hill Witches and from my experience whenever I have an interest as strongly as I had with Pendle Hill it usually means that I've lived there before or I was part of that and when I connect with it or even even I guess think about it fully it makes me I get really emotional so I'm trying not to do that just yet because I want to wait until later when it's dark and we can fully em embrace whatever soul memory is going to come out of me. But as a start, I'm pretty sure that if I was a Pendle Witch, then the, under Pendle, the other Pendle Witches are definitely going to come and say hello to me. Yeah. I think, I think, you, I think you know that I was, don't you? I'm saying nothing. Oh my god. No, she's off. No, I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh my, stop it. It's too early. Wait, it's not even dark yet. <sighs> I felt so excited on the car coming here today. I, I literally had, it was like a bubble of emotion burst out of my chest and I just felt like, oh, yes, I'm going to go and meet them. Which I should, why would I feel like that? Because I, I mean, how many times do we go to haunted places? I never feel like that. I'd like you to meet Alice Nutter, who was at the centre of the Pendle Witches trial. She was tried for witchcraft in 1612 and then hanged by her little delicate neck at Lancaster Prison until she was dead. Now Simon, if I was driving down here at night and came across this statue, it would scare the life out of me. Does that happen quite a lot? Uh, certainly at night time, the statue does uh, create a bit of an atmosphere and has scared the odd motorist, I must admit. What's going on with these chains? This statue depicts the day of her execution, 20th of August 1612. She's making her way to the gallows, as indeed all the witches were, in shackles, but the look on her face is really a cry of innocence. She didn't do it. Now, Alice's back is turned very squarely against the Lancaster courts where she was condemned to death. So it's a way of snubbing the decision that was made against her. So she's facing the opposite way and her bustle is pointing rather rudely towards the Lancaster court. And I'm with her. We've been in Pendle Hill now for some time and I've started to pick up the energy from the different spirits that I felt here and it's becoming easier to determine which spirits were associated with witchcraft and which weren't and I actually think that this, this woman, Miss Nutter, had nothing to do with witchcraft, that she was actually wrongly accused. Um, she was probably killed for a completely different reason and it was probably down to land ownership or just someone wanting to get rid of her. And what was what's more perfect crime than saying someone was a witch? It's the easiest way of killing somebody in those times. As you can see, this road is really busy, so Alice must do a really good job of scaring people when they drive past <laughs> at night. At night time, she certainly does get illuminated. It's very eerie. Oh, very mm -hmm. much so, very much so. It's a very, very sad statue, of course. Yeah. Was she guilty? Many people believe she wasn't guilty. Um, Alice had a huge problem. She was very, very intelligent. She was found guilty of witchcraft at Lancaster Castle with Demdike and young Alison Devise. She was found guilty of the murder of Henry Mitten of Ruffley because he wouldn't give her a penny. What we do know is that she was wealthy. She wouldn't need to beg. 
mm. and she made a plea of not guilty at Lancaster, but the youngest of the Device children, young Jeanette, had been kept at Reed Hall Burnley, the home of the local magistrate, and to use a modern term, she'd been groomed by him. And she was brought into the courts on the 20th of August 1612, placed on top of a desk so the jury could see her, and she shouted, Me grandmother's a witch, me mother's a witch, me brother's a witch, so's my sister. And then Roger Knoll, the magistrate, pointed at Alice. This woman here, was she at the Good Friday meeting at Malkin Tower, your home in the Forest of Pendle? She was, sir. A look of shock came across Alice's face as she knew she was being falsely incriminated. Mm. She went to her death, a very brave woman, but also, many people believe, a very innocent woman. Innocent. Hence the, the face which is a cry of innocence, really. So Simon, where have you brought us now? We're at what we call the Nick of Pendle, at an area known as Malkin Tower. Hang on, the Nick of Pendle? The Nick of Pendle is just there. When we say the Nick, it's the, the very, very top of Pendle. So that refers to the, the little cut through there? That's quite correct. And we're going to the where? We're going to go to a place called Malkin Tower, the famous meeting place of the Pendle Witches on Good Friday 1612. It's where they all converged. So we, we've, we've just driven right round uh, Pendle Hill, which has taken quite a while because it's, yes. it's quite a big It's a huge area. hill. It's a huge area. So the witches yeah. would have walked over the top? They would have probably walked down the centre of, uh, of the hill to come down to this side here. The area we're going to go to, of course, is hidden from the road. But this road in 1612 would have been a dirt track. It would have been the main road over Pendle Hill where the travellers would make their way. It's pretty exposed and remote out here, isn't it? Very, very remote. And of course, uh, the area where the Demdeck and Device family lived, of course, is very, very hidden. It's a bit awkward trying to get around these stones, folks, actually. Oh, it's quite good. Yeah, we've come at the right time. It's just, just starting to go dark. This actually track has not changed in the snow, but it's exactly like this way. So on this site, way back in the year 1612, stood a cottage called Malkin Tower. Living in Malkin Tower was this elderly lady called Demdike, alias Elizabeth Southern. Her daughter Elizabeth, her three children, James, Jeanette and Alison Device. Of course, every day would be a fight for survival. You've got to live, you've got to eat. But in many ways, these people were no different to you and I. They needed a roof over their heads, they needed clothes to wear, and of course, they needed food to eat as well. But uh, this is really the very, very epicentre of the whole story. We're surrounded by uh, local towns. We've got Cone just down there. We've got Burnley over there. We've got Accrington over there. And Clitheroe just on the other side of the hill here. So we've just arrived. And um, I just interrupted Simon's um, introduction to, to show you the reading that I'm getting off my, my dowsing crystal already. Side to side movement means something wicked is resident here, which is certainly the feeling I'm getting through my feet. And that movement is just getting bigger and bigger. And I think this spot was chosen for a reason, because like a lot of ritual sites and a lot of um, sites where houses are built that become troublesome and possessed there is an energy that's resident and whether that occurs naturally because of the structure of the rocks underneath or the convergence of two ley lines or the fact that it's been intentionally used to call in energy and often evil energy that is definitely the signature we're getting so I think that we're well placed to um, have quite an interesting time 
as the light goes as we're up here on Pendle Hill. This is really strange. My toes and my feet feel really hot. Almost as if there's like a radiator on top of my feet. It's nice because I'm a bit chilly, but I'm also a bit confused as to why my feet are just really hot. arrived in the spot where the witches did all of the spells and the witchcrafts. It's really exciting. It feels really nice to just be surrounded by nature like this. Most of witchcraft is founded in the natural world, so it makes sense they come here. I always seem to breathe when I come to these sort of places and it's like the weirdest shudder that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm really excited to see what, what happens here, though so long as we're safe it'll be okay, I hope so. So can we just compare notes for a second before this all starts to kick off? Sure. Because I'm really consciously not calling anything in at the moment because I just wanted us to get here and settle down and sort of check out the lie of the land. I feel like I'm tiptoeing around right now. Right. Like I don't want to fully engage either. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, uh, but my feet, weirdly, feel hot and, yeah. and tingly. My toes on my left foot are really sore actually. Like, um, <laughs> actually. Pinched. Yeah, like pinched. Like maybe someone's put a tool. I don't want to say dismemberment, but... Yeah, well, I think that we're going to get into picking up memories of people not being very nice to other people out here. Um, like sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm beginning to get. I get the sensation of this area to my left being where they would have done ceremonies and all the activity, magic, etc. And then this area to my right being the space where they would have, people would have waited or they would have been either watching or waiting for something. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, Jenny, actually. Here at Malkin Tower, Good Friday, 1612, all the other so-called witches were asked to assemble here. Uh, it's a very, very important story called the Good Friday Meeting. The whole idea of this meeting was to get a potion together to blow the gates of Lancaster City Castle open and rescue Demdike, Chattox, Redfern and Alison Devise. However, nothing happened. What did happen is word reached the ears of the local magistrate, Roger Noel, that a meeting had taken place here at Malkin Tower and he gave orders that everyone who had assembled at Malkin Tower on Good Friday should be arrested immediately. And when people heard about this, a few thought, hey, there's no way I'm going to hang around. But the ones that were successfully arrested were Jeanette Preston of Gisborne, Catherine Hewitt and Alice Gray of Cone, Margaret Pearson of Paddiam, Elizabeth Device, James Device, Jeanette Device, John and Jane Bullcock, a mother and son, and Alice Nutter. They were all sent to Lancaster, with the exception of the two Jeanettes. Jeanette Preston came from Gisborne. She was sent to the city of York, and there she was found guilty of witchcraft in York. Whereas the other Jeanette, Jeanette Device, the youngest child that lived here, she she was sent to the home of the local magistrate and she was going to play a very, very big part in the trials that took place at Lancaster that year. So this is a very, very historical place where the witches would meet. We're away from the road, it's hidden from uh, other parts of the hill and even now, as you quite rightly say, it does have an atmosphere. What is it that freaks you out about this place? Um, it's got like an eerie sort of vibe. I think the thing that freaks me out the most is that people have done really like satanic rituals here and slay rituals. Um, that makes me a bit wary to connect. Although the witches bless them, they're lovely, but it's just the rituals that people have done here. When people do rituals, they can summon really evil energies and I don't really know who I'm connecting with, if there's others, which there probably is. Now the thing about you is that for you to be able to connect and for you to work, your heart yeah. here. My throat, yeah. Your heart here yeah. with your heart chakra 
needs to connect with your throat chakra. Yeah. And unless they are connected, you don't seem to connect, you don't seem to work. Yeah. Do you think they're connected at the moment? No, not at all. Um, yeah, I don't feel like they're connected right now. Is that because you don't want them to connect at the moment? Um, yeah. If there's anything I've learned from doing filming is that when certain places, whenever people can, whenever people done rituals in places, that really freaks me out and it really makes me not want to connect with anything there because I don't know what people have summoned and I don't know what people have summoned here. Um, I feel safe around the witches, but I don't feel safe around whatever other people have come along and done evil rituals here. Because obviously there's a lot of energy in this point. Um, for that reason, that makes me a bit wary to connect. Well, I, I'm not saying that you should right now, but do you not think that on reflection, um, a refusal to connect is a step backwards for you? Because just ignoring it is not dealing with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel a bit, I'm not going to lie, I do feel a bit freaked out. Sometimes things do happen and they really make me want to jump back and just sort of pretend that none of this is real. That has happened quite a few times and I feel like that's sort of happening right now. I just don't want it to even be real. So I'm just like blocking myself completely from feeling anything because I don't really want to feel anything right now because I feel like there might be really evil ones. And I know what happens when I connect with evil ones and it's not very nice, so... And do you, not, do you not believe in yourself sufficiently to trust that you can open up without being harmed? Um, I, I think I'm just building, I'm just still building my protection. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I do, but I don't know, I'm just really wary of connecting with stuff here right now. I just really don't want to. The key about being any would-be witch is that it's a very elemental pastime. And that's exactly what we're doing now. We are out in the elements. We're out in the middle of the local moor on the side of Pendle Hill here in Lancashire. And it's very desolate. There is a quite, now quite a busy road running where the uh, track used to run, which has been there for centuries. But it's a very exposed lifestyle connected to the elements, reveling in the, in the glorious energy that you get from nature, from the crystalline energy that comes out of this ground that we're standing on. Because the whole of Pendle Hill is a massive lump of granite, which is why it's still here. It wasn't taken away by the Ice Age, when everything was laid flat on the north, north half of, uh, of England. So, Simon, I've been uh, referring to this hole, this uh, crescent shaped hole that we're standing in on Pendle Hill on the side of Pendle Hill as being like a, a bomb crater. Why is it shaped like a bomb crater? Well after 1612 this became the, the main focal point for the story and we had souvenir hunters even 400 years ago, three, 200 years ago and over the centuries all the stone has disappeared. So uh, the actual ground itself has, has actually dropped uh, the foundation. So this is literally into. people coming along grabbing themselves a souvenir from the oh, house. Yeah. Oh yeah. The witch's house that used to stand here and they've just dug down into the ground and made it this shape. That's why it has this, this shape now but the actual area is ideal because it looks towards the road and of course anyone travelling over the road could be seen for quite some distance. Yeah you have got an amazing Amazing viewpoint. Uh, an amazing here, viewpoint yeah. from here, yeah. Simon, it'd be lovely to find out if they felt they were falsely incriminated. <laughs> um, there's laughter. Yes and no. There's kind of like guilty laughter because there's like a, a sacred ring mm. around the outside of the protectors because they were for good, but heaven help anybody who went against them because they had the ability to do harm if somebody harmed them first. And they said that this is an immutable law of the way the universe works, is that you... Um, there's, there's, um, there's both. So yes and no is the answer. And if they hadn't been attacked and persecuted, they wouldn't have had to have done what they did. So are they safe now? No, they're trapped here. Simon, can you ask them if they know me? 
<laughs> laughing. They're saying, why are you even asking the question? You already know the answer. Amazing. Then how did I get away and they're still stuck here? You chose to. Your soul chose to. But your soul chose to by taking taking the path that it took. You know what you did. You took the um, the path of least resistance as a soul, and your contract was to escape from being trapped here to becoming part of another witch's coven. And they say they know that you know what that was. I don't know. Yes, you do. What? I'm not... I haven't, just, I haven't remembered yet. I know you, you, your contract was, your contract was with the undead, which is another form of stasis. Oh, vampires. Yeah. <laughs> but now you've escaped that, so. Simon, is this where I was? Killed. And this is, this is where it came to me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know how I feel. I don't even know how I feel right now. This is where it happened. This is where it happened. They want to know if you want to join them. Me join them? Yeah. They're, they're dead and I'm alive. But they can connect to you. That's, that's who's been... Guys that's who here. you felt. That's who you felt for the last 24 hours. That's, that's, that's what... That's what that, that energy was what caused the bubble in your chest. I mean, you know this. They say you know this already. And there's no pressure. But they're here. But what, what happens if I accept? You'll become much more powerful as well, a witch. What does that mean? It means you'll have more ability. You'll have more ability to heal. You'll have more ability to see the future. You'll have more ability to see evil. And you'll have more ability to do something about it. So... They can either step back or you can take it. I feel like I can't do anything else other than do that. They're, like, they're my sisters, aren't they? Yeah. I think you should take it. It's, it, it is your destiny and it is why you're here. Um, and it's why we're standing in this spot right now. And it's why, they, it's why they've come. If this helps me protect myself as well, will that help me protect myself? Yeah, because it's a hugely powerful contract, but it is a contract. What am I giving them? It's what they're giving you. But what you're giving them is the soul that they love and miss. So if you want to accept, you're to go over there with them and allow them to complete the process, or you can just step back. I don't feel afraid. I'm just very conscious of the fact that you keep saying to me I need to choose between it's, no, it's because bad. it's because you, no, it's because you have the choice. They say, this is really making my head hurt, so we need to hurry up. Sorry, I'm getting a splitting headache. Well, if it, help, if it means I can help people and it means I can protect myself, it then does. I think it's very positive, isn't it? It is. I, I, I don't feel 
fear acting as a bridge at the moment. And the reason that Metatron is here, I now understand, is because Metatron is the keeper of the Stellar Gateway. And whenever he appears, it's when I'm, when I'm about to make a massive connection between the two worlds, and that's what's happening right now. So I'm the bridge. But if they're stuck here, are they, will they will this release them? They're not stuck here, but they've chosen to remain in that condition so that they can continue to connect with people like you. Mm. And this is their... This is their home. And that's the choice they've made, and that's what they do. I can see them behind you. But you, honestly, you need to hurry up because my head is about to explode. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Either choose to stay here or go over there with them and connect with them and then when you come back you will be connected with them on a permanent basis but it is your it's, it's your calling I'm going to do why that. do you think that man came up to you earlier and said I'm a witch you're a witch okay I'll t I, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what's going to happen though well that's life Well, I'm shook. As I said... That was intense. This program never works out the way that we think. What just happened was I connected with the energy that is here, which is the witches' coven, which is the Pendle Hill witches, who are the Pendle Hill witches. And my guide... One of my guides, Archangel Metatron, came through their ranks to guide them and to um, protect us and to protect Jenny. And what just happened was they offered her a contract to become reattached to them permanently, which she has taken, which is, in simple terms, a witch's contract. And things have been building up to this for quite a long time and, and now it's happened and we now understand why we came to Pendle Hill, why we investigated this area today, why we were looking for the ghost of Alice Nutter and she was here with them. She wasn't one of them but she was connected to them energetically. There are a lot of people here who weren't one of them, but who are part of that connection, who have chosen to remain here. So, that's happened. And that is possibly the weirdest ghost next door so far. I've got an absolutely splitting headache from the energy that oh just came through me. And this is the moment where I say goodbye for this week. Um, I think we all feel a bit freaked out. But what you just what you just saw was something very special. And I feel honoured to have been part of that. And we will see you another time on Ghost Next Door.